so many field chapters. We're going to talk about a resemblance of Jesus coming back. And we're going to see what we're going to get out of this message today. First Samuel, the 25th chapter. Samuel, the 25th chapter. And when you have found it, I just ask as if you please will let me you can. Please stand up as I read the hearing of the word of God. 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter. Now I just ask you to follow me along because I will call the verses and you can follow along because it's a long chapter, but I'm going to come back to it in two more. It says in verse 18, then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine, five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of porch corn, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode out on the ass, that she came down by the cover of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow had in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained to him. And he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. It is for that one, verse 22. It says, I have leave all that pertain to him by the morning, like any that pisseth against the wall. Verse 23 says, And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the axe and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience, and hear the words of thy handmaid. Amen. And I want to go to verse 28, and I ask you to be seen. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make a Lord for sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in all thy days. You may be seen. I want to talk about the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, Behold, I come quickly, and that my reward is with me. Scripture even also says in Acts, the first chapter, when Jesus ascended back to the heaven on the Mount of Olives, two angels right there with the disciples says, Me and why are you gazing up in the sky? And likewise have Jesus left in the same way he's going to come back. Scripture also says in Revelation, the first chapter, that the Lord is going to come riding the clouds back down, that he's going to come and the wolves, those, every eye shall see him and those that have pierced him and that there will be many welling at the mouth, meaning that people is going to be shocked that they're going to see Jesus open up the sky and that he's going to run and he's going to come down on the cloud to bring judgment on earth. Amen. He's going to bring a close to all wickedness just with the word out of his mouth and that he's going to consume everyone with the fire that's against him. Amen. This is an illustration I want to talk about today. What's going on in this subject of text today in 1 Samuel 25th chapter is that in your life, you either live it two ways, one or the other way of two ways. You either live in righteous or you live in unrighteous. You either live in holy or you even live in wickedness. You even live in modesty or you live in vanity. You either live in yourself in wisdom or you live in yourself like a fool. You have to pick and choose what you want to live your life as because we have to remember, Jesus told an illustration of a parable about ten virgins, if we remember, that five of them was wise and five of them were foolish. Let me know, how are you living your life preparing yourself for the Lord? Are you being wise in your ways of life or 
are you living your life in the foolish ways? When you live your life in the foolish ways and not concerning yourself of the Lord's return, you are lost and you are blind and you need to be found before it's too late. Thank God that he came because he says that I come to seek and save those which was lost. Everyone in here was lost at one time. And some may be still lost. And we may still have some stuff to work on. But thank God that he gave Jesus Christ that we all can be saved through him. Amen. There's four characters I like to talk about in this subject. One is King David. He was the king of Israel, and he's going to be an illustration of Jesus. The second is his servants, that we know that a king has servants, and basically whatever the king says, the servants will do. Let me know that Jesus has servants, and who is his servants? He has the heavenly host of angels. Anything Jesus says, the angels will do. Amen. Remember, he was on the cross, and the Bible says he could have called a legion of angels to come down, but they did not do it because Jesus suffered for us that we all may be saved. Amen? Well, that's when we have a married couple, which is Nabal and Abigail. Nabal was the man. The Bible says that he was churlish, meaning that he was very rude, and that he was very wealthy, and that he was mean in his dealings. Let you know, just because you got money, you might not have sense. You can have all the money in the world, but still don't have no liquor sense whatsoever. Amen? You can have it. You cannot buy wisdom. Bible, you can't buy wisdom because there's two types of wisdom. There's an earthly wisdom and there's a godly wisdom. That money cannot buy everything. You cannot buy wisdom from God. It has to be given from God through prayer and seeking the Lord. Amen? You can go to Acts, the eighth chapter, where Simon, he was a sorcerer. He tried to buy the Holy Spirit from the apostles. And basically, Peter told him that you and your money don't perish. You can go to school. That's fine. But school cannot give you wisdom from God. Many people go to school to be preachers. School does not make you a preacher. It gives you knowledge. It gives you history. But only from God, he can give you the Holy Spirit. You cannot find the Holy Spirit. That's why I can't get at times when some churches sit there and do applications looking for a pastor and they say you must have four years of this degree, four years of this and everything. It's okay to have history, but God made preachers. Spirit comes from God. Money can't buy you the spirit, amen? So you got to ask from on high to get the wisdom from the Lord, amen? He had a wife that was named Abigail. Let me tell you about Abigail. The Bible says, I believe in verse 3 or 4, is that Abigail was beautiful in her countenance and that she had good understanding, meaning that she had good sense. That means that she was a beautiful lady and she had good sense. Now, it just makes it obvious, like, why would a couple come together when you got one fool and then you got one that got sick? So you know that this relationship always had to be toxic in some sort of way. Because if you look at verse 27 in first chapter the 20, uh, first Samuel, the 25th chapter, his name means folly. That means that his name meant a fool. So now, I don't know who would name their child a fool, but he definitely living by his name. Amen? But let me ask you something. If you took upon Christ, that means you took upon the name Jesus Christ. That means you have taken upon a Christian. So, if Nabal lived his name as it meant as a fool, are we living our life just as we receive Jesus Christ? Uh, you see what I'm saying? That we have to live ourselves for Christ. We have to represent his name. So, in this moral of this message, David was in this town called Paran, in the a, in a, in a village of Moab. And so, basically, him and his servants was out taking care of all the sheep, taking care of everything of the land. And Nabal was the owner of this land. David found out that Nabal was close by in Carmel, shearing sheep. So David sent out his servants to go greet him and meet him and basically ask for a favor. How many of you know that the Lord is asking us to come to the picture? How many of you know that God, the Lord, is sending out his message each and every day telling us to repent and get ourselves ready for the Lord. Amen. 
David sent out his messengers, 10 young men, to go meet Nabal and give him a message. God's people is always sending a message out to the world that the world needs to repent. God sent messages all throughout the Bible to tell people that they need to repent. They need to change their lives for the better. God sent a man named Jonah to go preach to a wicked town in Nineveh. Jonah ran away from the Lord, but he got things straight after he was engulfed by a great fish and preached to that city of Nineveh to come to repentance. Still to this day, people, God is sending his heavenly message. He's sending his message out in the world to call to the world to come back to him. Amen? He says, come back to him while he is there and call up him while he can may be found. Amen? He sent his service to Nabal. Now, Nabal, remember, was church. He was rude, mean in his dealings. And when they came to greet him in the king's name, Nabal had a few choice words for the men. He basically told him off and said, who is this son of um, Jesse? Who is this baby? Do you know as people still today asking, who is this Jesus? Who is this son of God? We don't want to hear about this Jesus Christ. We don't want to hear about this son of God. These things are still true today. People do not want to hear truth. People do not want to hear the word of God. When you reject the word of God, guess who you rejected? You rejected God. And Jesus said, you did not make I deny you before the Father. So do not reject the word of God. They came and greeted him in the king's name. Let's talk about the king's name right quick. When you come in the king's name, that means you come in in authority when you use the king's name. Have we all been young at one time and to our siblings or to our cousins and you go to them and say, your mama said this or your daddy said this. When you say that, that means you put authority behind it because when you tell them to do something, they right ain't going to listen to you. But when you go say, mama or daddy or grandma or grandpa said it, they're going to listen. People do it at the job all day. They'll sit there and come and say, boss man say, come do this or that. When they say that, they're using that name for authority. How do you think the disciples cast out demons? Who name did they use? In the name of Jesus. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he came in the power of his name to raise Jesus uh, Raise, raise Lazarus from the dead. When David went against Goliath, he says, you come with me with a sword and a shield, but I come before you in the name of the Lord. When you use the name of Jesus, it has authority in it. That's why it's been given to us. Use the name of Jesus over your sickness. Use the name of Jesus over your prayers. Use the name of Jesus of things that's coming up against us. When this arctic storm is coming, use the name of Jesus against us. Amen. That's why we got it. Use the name of Jesus Christ. That was a man in the book of Acts that needed money. He came to Peter and him as they was coming up, and Peter told him, "Silver and gold I did not have, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk." And the man got up and walked. So we have to use the name of Jesus for authority, people. Amen. As he came to Nabal, Nabal ran him away. One thing about it, the scripture says that they went to report back to David when the law said, do you know everything you say in your life is being recorded? Everything that you do in your life is being recorded. The scripture says that every word, every item word that we speak of is going to be judged against us. Amen? It says by thy words you can be justified and by thy words you can be condemned. The Bible is always telling us that we have to be careful how we carry ourselves. How many of you know the angels are reporting every day to the Lord? If you don't believe me, you can go to Job, the first chapter, verse 6 and 7, where it says that at one time the sons of men was all appearing to the Lord, which was the angels, and also Satan appeared right there with them. Let me know that the angels are giving report every day of things we say, things we do, every time. And even Satan got to give a report to God. Do you believe that? Satan got to give a report to God, let you know who he is in charge. So the servants went back and told David, basically he said, and so David got upset and said, men, gird up your swords. One thing about it, when David said that men, gird up your swords, he had he done had enough, amen? When God has enough with us, it's trouble that's coming our way. In the days of Noah, God had enough. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God had enough. There was a wicked king, Herod, in Acts the 12th chapter that took his pride and killed all of God's people and 
And one thing about it, the Lord touched his belly and said worms came out and killed it because God had enough of it. One thing about it, people, it's going to come a point in time if we don't get our life straight, God is going to have enough of us. And all he got to do is call your name. That man that was dancing on that floor, God said, I had enough of it. The great thing he done to him, he can do to us. Amen. Thank God for another day because it's going to come a time when he said, I had enough. Hezekiah, that was a king named Hezekiah. God had enough. We put him on a point of bed, a deathbed of rest, about to die. And then Isaiah had to come to him and tell him, get your house in order because you're about to die. He turned his life around, turned to the wall, and prayed it to the Lord, and the Lord spared him for 15 more years. Thank the Lord that he spared your life. Because there's many times I know he has spared my life. Amen. He could have took it, but he spared your life. So David basically said that I'm going to go kill every man that pissed against the wall. Basically what it means that every man that has pissed against the wall, which is the man, is that when God takes the men from the king, that means that he takes his power and his strength from the people. Because at that time, women didn't do nothing. All the men did the work. They went and killed. They went and brought the food in. They did the building. They did everything while the women stayed at the house. So when you take away the men, you took away the strength. And the king sure ain't going to go out there and do no work. So when you take away the workers and you take away the strength, you ain't got nothing at all. So what they tell me is that when he said that he's going to take everyone that is against the wall, the Lord can do the same thing for us. Amen. He can take away from you your strength. He can take everything away from you until you get yourself right. Amen. Thank God for the strength that he gives us. David is on his way. And word got to Abigail that David is on his way. Has the word got to you yet? Has the word got to you that the Lord is on his way? Has the word got to you that the Lord is trying to tell you you need to repent? Has the word got to you that it's just burning in you, that's fire shut up in your bones? The Bible says that my word is like a hammer that it break every rock. My word is like a fire that consumes everything. One thing about it, have you got the word, people? Have you got the authority of the name of Jesus to break every rock that comes your way? Use that name and use that authority, amen? We thank God for it, amen? We just don't know how important the name of Jesus Christ is and that what he can give to us. He says that, I will, my word is like a lamp and a light into my path. We need a pathway. We need a light in our pathway to walk in as the ways of the Lord. Amen? When Abigail heard of the word, the Bible says she made haste. That means that she moved quickly. And that's something that should tell us right now is that we need to stop sitting around and we need to make haste. We need to start doing better. Like we need to start changing our lives for better for, the, for Christ. And I'm not just saying no one in here, but I'm talking to the whole world, is that we need to make haste. Abigail in verse 18 says that she made haste. She started making cakes. She started making uh, raisins. She made all type of things and got it prepared for King David because the king was on his way to kill every man in that camp. This is what I'm trying to say. If you ain't woke up yet, is that the Lord is on his way. You got to make haste. You got to get on the ball. You got to repent. You got to start praying. You got to start praising. You got to return to the Lord while you have time. Amen. Abigail got on the ass and started moving. One thing about it, I want you to notice this. Don't wait for the Lord to come meet you. You go meet the Lord himself. The Bible says that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man open, I suck him. When someone knocked at the door, you got to go to that door and meet them at that door. When somebody knocked at your door, you just don't say, come on in. When somebody knocks at your door, you go meet them and say, who is it? And whoever it is that you want to talk to or not, it's your choice to leave that door closed or open it up and let them in. Amen? So she went to go meet Jesus. And that's what it's telling us today is to go meet Jesus while you have time. And when she was going up on the map, Lagon speed it up now. She went ahead and met King David as he was coming down to prepare to kill the people. The Bible says she got off the ass and bowed down and put her face to the ground. That means that she left the knowledge that he 
was king. And we need to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. That when we make haste, we need to bow down to the Lord. Amen. We need to turn our face to the ground. That shows humility and humbleness to the Lord. The Bible said God resists the pride, but give grace to the humble. Humble yourselves before the Lord. When she went to David, she went to David and asked for forgiveness. When she asked for forgiveness and presented her gifts to David, David had a change of mind. Now, what can you give God to make him change his mind? You give him yourself. God ain't worried about your money. God ain't worried about your eyes or your raises. But when she gave King David all these things, he saw that she humbled herself before him. And this is what we need to do before the Lord returns, is humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. When she humbled herself and asked for forgiveness, David said, I'm glad you met me here. It was wise that you met me as I was coming down. How many of you know that Jesus said, it was wise that you came to me before you died? Because if you don't go to Jesus and receive him as Lord and see before you die, it will be condemnation for us all. Amen? Meet him while he's on his way. Nobody knows the day and the time when the Lord is coming, but we still need to meet him while he's on his way. Amen? When he met Abigail, he went ahead and received her and forgiven her. Forgiveness is of the Lord. You got forgiveness of the Lord. And when Abigail received the forgiveness and David spared the men of the army, David turned around and left. One thing about it, David repented of the things that he was going to do toward the people because he had a change of mind. How many of you know God can repent? Yes, you can go to Jonah, the third chapter, verse 10. God was going to destroy the city of Nineveh. But when Jonah went to preach them for repentance, they changed their mind. They fasted. Even the animals fasted. And they received the Lord. And the Bible said God repented what he was going to do for them. One thing about it is if you want to make God repent for the destruction of his to us, receive him and um him when he can change his mind and he won't be there bring destruction, eternal destruction to us. Amen? Now, as Abigail, I'm getting to a close. Abigail made it back to her husband. And he was partying, basically, having a banquet, saying that he was full of wine, meaning that he was drunk. And when he sold it up, Abigail told him what had happened. And the scripture says that his heart failed, meaning that he had a heart attack. And when he had a heart attack, the Bible says 10 days later, God took him. That lets you know that God got your life in his hands. He had a heart attack, but 10 days later, God took him. So thank God for spreading your life always when he has given to you. When he died, the fool died, but the wise stayed alive. Let you know the fool is going to die to eternal damnation, but the wise are going to live forever with the kingdom of Christ. Amen. When he died, David heard about it and came back to Abigail. He went ahead and asked her to marry him. And that's when you can have four, five, ten wives, but no things not permitted now. But he went ahead and received her as his wife. But the moral of that was is that she chose life over death because the ball was of death. But she went ahead and chose life to marry to the king that she may live and then live in his prosperity. Now, as this ends, what happens when Jesus Christ comes for the church? You either going to die with the ball, the foolish. Are you going to receive him and be married until the marriage of the Lamb of Christ to be with one, to be with him, and to be with eternal happiness, which is a prosperity. Amen. Receive Jesus. Meet him while he's coming. Amen. Jesus met us as he was carrying his cross to the skull of Golgotha, which was called Calvary. Jesus met us when he laid his life down on the cross. Jesus met us when they pierced